Good evening, everybody. This is Katie, Program Manager at the Ridges Sanctuary, and today I'm joined with two of our volunteers, and we are coming to you today with a woodcock watch, one of our favorite activities to do um, in the in the springtime. But we're bringing it to you virtually this year. Hi, my name is <laughs> I, my name is Jane Whitney. I'm a volunteer here at the Ridges Sanctuary, and I'm Julie Knox, also a volunteer here at the Ridges Sanctuary. So tonight, you can see I'm laden. We're going out into the field. We know that woodcocks are here. We have heard them painting. Paint is a P-E-E-N-T. They paint. We have heard them here. So we know that this should be an evening we might catch them doing their sky dance, as Aldo Leopold first said, sky dance. Um, their mating dance here on their singing grounds. But I have, as you can see, because tonight it's going to be almost dark by the time we get to, to have any activity here. So I bring binoculars, which are good for the last light. We face west so that you can see the silhouette of the uh, woodcock rising. And I have pillows because we sit on stumps. <laughs> and we sit for a long time and a blanket because sometimes it gets cold. Here in Door County, it gets chilly it gets when cold. And you down. can hear the woodcocks from, depending on where you are, March, that's way too early here, but April and May. And so what happens is you want to be warm because you're going to be sitting. Mm -hmm. oh. Did you hear the winter wren? Little bird with a very big song. Oh, it's my favorite bird mm -hmm. call. It's a winter wren. Of all time. Mm -hmm. oh. I love them. So I imagine some people here might not even know what a woodcock is. What is a woodcock? Well, it's actually a shorebird, although it doesn't live on the shore. It <laughs> lives in the woods, but it's considered a shorebird. It's a little bird about the size of a robin, doesn't have much of a tail, has a relatively big head, uh, broad wings compared to the size of it. Um, has a long and a bill. very long bill. Um, two and a half to two and three quarters inch. The, it's a it's a it's a nondescript bird. It's I think it's actually called cryptic, because it's it blends so well into its environment, which is the forest floor. Um, you can almost almost step on them before you see them, um, and both sexes look alike. The female is generally a little larger, and her bill is a little longer. So they're out here. They are definitely a ground nesting bird. So. They will lay four eggs in a nest right on the ground, kind of brownish, speckly eggs. So what we're s hoping to see tonight is the mating dance. So the male uh, comes to what's called the singing grounds. Isn't that great? <laughs> um, and will paint, 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 paint. Then will rise into the air two to three hundred feet in an enormous spiral and he makes um, a twittering, Tweet, tw twittering twittering sound mm -hmm. but not with his voice it's his wings so first you hear the ping, ping. then you hear <whistles> up he goes down he comes in a zigzag pattern lands almost exactly in the same spot mm. yes he's coming down though Mm -hmm. You don't hear the, the Twitter anymore. You start to hear some kissy sounds, which is by that point, you've often lost him up in the air somewhere, but you hear the voice change. All of a sudden, it sounds kind of kissy, kind of. <laughs> Just you like that. Coming down. And that's his voice. So he goes from his voice to his wing twitters, then to his voice again. And that you'll hear. And then you start to look for him to come down in the same spot. Now, if there's any female in the area and happens to think he's done a good job sky dancing, she will make herself available. But a uh, woodcock will mate with more than one female. He'll keep singing every night even after he meet, mates with one in hopes of getting another one. And even long after all the females are busy on their nests with young, he's still out there singing hoping for more. They come out and the female will also still visit singing grounds even after mm -hmm. she has um, mm -hmm. if she has a little spare time. Um, they come out um, about what we're doing here tonight, let's back up. What we're doing here tonight is sunset is coming, probably about 8.15ish. We hope to be sitting on our stumps before that because we don't want to have any disturbance 
we know he comes to this spot. We want to be sitting and quiet about 10, 15 minutes before sunset because he will start when the light is 15 candle lights, something like that. Anyway, wow. about 15 minutes after sunset. So you might be sitting for a half hour. Sometimes it's a little more than 15 a minutes more. after sunset. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's 40 minutes. Anyway, um, so you just take your time. That's why you need to be comfortable with a pillow. With um, You can bring a lawn chair if you set it up early enough. Just set it up. There are many ways to observe woodcocks. And some people like to get super close. Or when he takes off to try to sneak in and s sit near where he's going to come down or they bring a flashlight and try to flash it on him. Here at the ridges, um, we don't like to engage the, the wildlife, or in this case, the woodcock. We would much rather just observe, learn, sit quietly, and just participate as a quiet observer and learner rather than engage. And we think that's a valuable experience, um, a good way to learn about uh, how that bird behaves. So that's kind of our emphasis. It's very low key, <laughs> very low key. But it is why um, we come prepared to sit. And it's a slightly different. It's, and you know, it, you can, young people, we've had young people on our hikes. They do very well because they anticipate it. And the first time, remember that woman, Julie, in one of our, um, he showed up like over there and Pete, Pete, and she went, oh, yeah, I, it was just so exciting for her because he was so close. So you can do it. It, it has its own little like, built in excitement. Yes. But um, the yeah. place, the place to go would be a, a, a field, at least about a quarter of an acre or, or larger open area because they need to have room to do their display. It's near some kind of shrubby, often damp undergrowth, new growth forest or recovering woodlands. Right, it needs edges mm -hmm. uh, for the female and it needs the open field for the male. Um, they, the young are called, uh, is what called precocial because they're ground nesters. The, the mother, the female, um, really only tends to them until they dry off wow. <laughs> from being hatched. Mm -hmm. Then the first week they're dependent on her for yeah, food. I, not even a week, just right, a few just days. Just a few days, and they mm -hmm. start to probe with their bill for insects, earthworms. And Tell them about the bill. The bill is different from a lot of bills. Most bills you think of as being very stiff and straight. They have a bill which is flexible so that it can open and close. Uh, yeah, the, bend up, <laughs> bend up underground, yeah. so they can grab little worms and things mm -hmm. in the ground. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they're learning to fly at two weeks. Mm -hmm. And by four weeks, they're d adults. Uh, for just a few weeks, they kind of act as a mm -hmm. sibling family, and then they're by totally six broken weeks, up. they're gone. They're gone. Mm -hmm. So um, oh. quick because they're ground nesters. You can't linger if you're a ground nester. Mm -hmm. We might want to show them how they find the worms. Oh, we could. We could do we that. Could. We, we could do that. that. We could okay. do that. Okay. <laughs> we could do that. Okay. We could do that. So, one of the peculiar things again, you can, you can, you can look at them online, and it's great. YouTube is good for this, but they have a peculiar way to walk. So, d is this the best way? Okay, here's my beak. Yeah, here's my beak. So, what they do? How's that? <laughs> Isn't that? <laughs> the 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> they are wonder. Again, these creatures are great fun to watch, mm -hmm. um, to get to know. They're unique in the bird world their eyes they have binocular vision front oh, yes. and back <laughs> because their head is here their eyes are here and their bulgy and their ears are between their eyes and their beaks right down and, in front and their brains are upside down and then it, they're just a different bird they are their eyes stick out so they have 360 degrees horizontally and around up and up down and 180 binoculars both front and back the binocular vision Tail, uh, a bill that hinges underground. The dancers. Dancers. <laughs> they're set to music and quite a few YouTube they're, they're videos great on yeah. YouTube. Mm -hmm. And um, and they, they give us a show. They give us a show. Mm -hmm. They sky dance. They're migratory. Um, they're reliable. Oh, showing up. <laughs> Ten years. Um, they have a short yeah. lifespan. Um, but they're an interesting bird to read about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lifespan is about two years. Two years or so. So, mm -hmm. so tonight we hope. We're going to get quiet and we're going to go and sit 
and wait and hope for Pete's tonight. Pete's tonight. Yes. <laughs>